Today we will be looking at this DIY 10 inch wide rack that I have built using these aluminium profile rails which are the same rails that are used in 3D printers. I wanted a rack that was 50 cm in height, 20 cm in depth and allowing 10 inch rack mounts to be mounted on it. So I bought this in 50 cm, 25 cm and 20 cm in length. Now to join these rails, I made use of these angle connectors to make two rectangular frames, one for the front and one for the back, making sure it measures about 26 cm in total width, including the rails such that the 10 inch rack mounts would fit perfectly in it and I can attach the rack mounts using the screws. Now these angle connectors can slide in one side and the other side is fixed which gives the flexibility to adjust the rack as I wanted. Finally with this, I assembled all the four sides of the rack using these angle connectors, then tightened all the screws and to have this entire rack standing and this is how it looks like. Now I also bought these caps to cover up the sharp edges of the rails and also created these feet, printed them and attached them to the bottom to prevent the rack from being scratched from the bottom. Now once the rack is ready, how did I mount the rack mounts? Well for this I made use of these small little T-block sliding M5 nuts. These have spring loaded bearings such that you can just slide them into the rails and it stays inside the rails which also provides me the flexibility to move it up or down. Now to hold the rack mounts, I have these M5 screws which I can just tighten them with my fingers such that the rack mount stays in place. Now to make it easier to carry the rack, I bought these handles to mount it on top of the rails using the same T-block sliding nuts and with this I can easily pick up the rack. Now this is how the entire rack looks like. Now let's look at what I have added to the rack. Firstly, I printed this 10 inch rack mount for the Slate 7 travel router from GLINet that has 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. This one is going to be the first one on my rack and it will be my entry and exit point for all my network traffic in the rack. It has this touch screen to select various services and I can also run my own VPN server on this travel router. I have a full video about this device linked somewhere here as well as into the description below. Then the next one I added was this rack mount for the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Orange Pi 5 Max. In this one, you can either fit in two Raspberry Pi 5s or two Orange Pi 5 Max as they both have the same screw locations. Now I have also attached an HDMI cable so that I can get the display output from these two SBCs. Next I added this mount with a jet KVM here so that I can connect to any devices and control it remotely using this interface. Now I got this 3D print file from printables and I did not modify it as it had the perfect fit for the jet KVM and I haven't used the patch cord connectors yet. After this, I added the 8 port Netgear switch to which I will be connecting all the devices on the rack. I wanted to add a 2.5 gigabit switch by buying this Ubiquiti 2.5 gigabit flex switch but I already had this one and I decided to reuse it. I'll upgrade to the 2.5 gigabit switch a little later so make sure to subscribe to the channel to see any updates that I make to this rack. Then I made this mount for this Radza Rock 5T. It has an octa-core ARM based processor with dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. I have a whole video about its performance on my channel. Next to that I have made some space for some new SBC that could be released in the future and I already have some space for it. Then finally we have is this Latte Panda Mu light carrier board. It has an N100 processor on module and requires this cooler to keep this processor running at optimal temperatures. With this module mounted on the board, we can make use of various interfaces from the module. Now I created this rack mount for this carrier board to make it part of my rack and I'll be transferring some of my applications from my main server onto this board. Now finally to power these devices I have added this power strip that will support 6 devices and I have attached it to the rack using M5 screws that I used to hold the rack mounts. Now I didn't want to keep the rack completely open so I made use of my previous idea for my NAS that is to make use of acrylic glass. I made this mount 
such that I can attach it to the rack using the same M5 screws and with this I'm able to mount the acrylic glass in such a way that I'm just able to slide the glass in the mounts. Also, I wanted this glass to be easily removable so that I can access the internals of the rack whenever I want to say access some buttons or ports on the back of the SBCs. I also made some mounts to hold the acrylic glass on the top and the bottom of the rack to make it look neater and prevent open areas for dust to come in. With all this thing done, let's turn it on. Now there are a couple of advantages I get from this DIY rack. Firstly, I can easily arrange the rack mounts by just sliding the mounts and then tighten the screws where I want this mount to be held. Another advantage of using these rails was that I get endless possibilities to attach anything to this rack like how I've added this power strip to the rack without even drilling any hole to it. Then yet another advantage is that I can extend this rack anytime I want. I just have to get this extender and extend this rack vertically so it's like an unlimited rack that I can extend whenever I want. As of now, I still have a good amount of space for new SVCs that I will review and add to this rack. Now I have a detailed article in the description below with all the components and the measurements of the rack and the 3D print files that I have created such that you can make use of it to build your own DIY rack. Now I have put in a good amount of effort in making this DIY rack so please consider subscribing to the channel to see more such videos to come. And also make sure to hit that like button and share the videos wherever you can. You can also support my work and this channel via Patreon or you could just buy me a coffee. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.